Look at that. Look at that. Hello and welcome to In the Kitchen with Matt. I am your host, Matt Taylor. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make homemade mozzarella cheese. Oh yeah, using pretty much just two ingredients. Just using milk and white distilled vinegar. Now, there are a few recipes out there on how to make your own mozzarella cheese, and one of the popular ones involves using citric acid and a product called rennet. Um, and, but you don't have to use those. You can make it with vinegar instead. And that's the method I am going to show you right now. Really easy to do, simple ingredients. If I can do it, you can do it. Before we move on, make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of my new videos. Let's get started. Down below in the description box, you'll find a list of the ingredients and their amounts. Here we go. So I have some raw milk here. And I got this at my local Sprouts. You can find it like Whole Foods, um, natural grocers. But um, if you can't find raw milk, so raw milk, uh, raw milk is unpasteurized. If you can't find raw milk, you can use pasteurized whole milk, but don't use ultra pasteurized, okay? So use either just normal pasteurized whole milk or raw milk. And so I'm gonna take this, this is one half gallon or 1.89 liters. And I'm going to pour it all in this large pot. This is my Dutch oven. Okay. And now over to the stovetop we go. Here we are over at the stovetop and I have the heat on the burner set to in between medium low and medium. So on my setting, it goes one to nine for the heat. So I have it set to a four. And we don't wanna heat it up super fast, but we're going to stir and heat it until it reaches 115 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about 46 Celsius. And it doesn't have to be exact. It could be between 115 and 120. Fahrenheit, so between 46 and 48 Celsius around there. And the reason why we want to stir while we are heating it up is you want it to heat up very evenly. All right, we got to 115, 116, that is great. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that vinegar, this is seven tablespoons of white distilled vinegar and pour it all in there. And then I'm gonna take my slotted spoon here and just stir a little bit, kind of taking it from the sides and go in. 35 seconds or so. And you can see it's already starting to curdle. All right. And then turn off the heat. And then I'm gonna take my lid and put the lid on and let it sit for five minutes. Once the five minutes are up, we will take off the lid and you'll see the cheese develop on the top. Now, if you're using citric acid and rennet, then it'll develop a thin film, kind of like custard on the top, and then you'll cut through it with a knife. And now we want to gather up the curd. So we'll take a spoon and we'll just take it, see that that's the curd, and we'll take it and squish it together into itself. And it should come together pretty nicely. Definitely depends on the type of milk that you use. The raw milk, it'll co it comes together a lot better than just using normal pasteurized milk, but it, it'll still work. I've done it with both types. And now, what I wanna do is I wanna transfer this to a bowl. There's the cheese right there. Make sure to get it all out. Okay, I'm gonna set this aside. 
and take my cheese here. Now there is way too much liquid and whey with the cheese right now. And so we wanna squeeze all the extra uh, whey out that we can. And so I have some gloves here. You can use clean hands as well. You don't have to use the gloves, but it's always a good idea to use gloves with the cheese. Okay, and then I'm just gonna grab this in my hand and just kind of squeeze it and put it back together and squeeze it. I'm not squeezing, at this point, I'm not squeezing too hard yet. I'm gonna take this extra way and pour it over here in a big, big pot. And then you can also take it down and just push on it and squeeze it like this and knead it a little bit. And that lets you get some extra pressure. Okay, I'm gonna dry out this bowl real quick. I got most of the way out of the cheese. And I'm gonna take the ball of cheese and put it back in here. And now we wanna bring up the temperature of this cheese to 160 degrees Fahrenheit. There's a couple ways that you can do that. You can reheat the whey. That's a common method. Reheat the whey to about 160, 170, and then immerse the cheese into that, and that'll help it get to temp. Or just use the microwave. I'm gonna put this in the microwave for about 30 seconds, and then check the temp. Stretch it a little bit, 30 seconds, until we get up to 160 Fahrenheit. Okay, I'm gonna test it. It's about 135. Also, if there's any extra weight in there, I'm gonna pull it out and remove it. Okay? And we can stretch it a little bit. Push it down a little bit and get some more of that way out. Okay, and into the microwave once again for about 25, 30 seconds. Almost there, almost a tenth. Okay. Yep, right about there. And then I'm just gonna spin this a little bit. Get some more of that way out. And it's gonna be really hot, but that's just an amazing ball of cheese. And eventually you should be able to be able to get it in your hands and we'll just keep pushing it and stretch it. Look at that. Yeah. Stretch it. And you can form it into a ball. Just keep going in your hands and kind of tucking it cupping it, we're just getting it so it's nice and ball shaped. Okay, and then I have some water. Once you get to that point, I got some water here. I'm gonna just dump it right in that water. And so we're gonna just start cooling down the cheese and that just is cool, like cool water. It's not super cold yet. I'm gonna let it sit in there for about 10 minutes. And then after about 10 minutes, I'm gonna get some ice cubes and just cool down the water even more and let it sit in there for another five minutes or so. All right, and once the cheese has chilled, we can take it out. And there it is. That is our block of mozzarella. And now, what about this leftover whey? What can you do with that? There's a lot of things you can do with the leftover whey. Instead of just dumping it down the drain, you can use it. Um, anytime you have a recipe that calls for water, you can use this whey instead and it'll add a boost of nutrients because this is highly nutritious. You could just drink it if you wanted to. You can use it for other things like watering the plants. Um, so there's a variety of things that you can do with it instead of just throwing it away. But I will leave that up to you. Okay, and then I'm going to just take a paper towel and just kind of pat this dry a little bit and get any of that extra little water from it. Yeah, there we go. Now, if you wanna grate the cheese, it grates easier if you freeze it. And then to store it, just take some plastic wrap or cling wrap.
and just wrap it up like that and put it in the fridge where it will last for about one to two weeks in the fridge. You could also put this in another container, like an airtight container to further protect it. There you go. That is how you make homemade mozzarella cheese with only two ingredients. Time to cut into it and show you what it looks like. I'm just gonna take this right here. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. Awesome. I'm gonna give it a taste. And it'll stretch a little bit, but then it'll stretch more when it when it um, melts. Mmm. Mmm. Yeah. I love homemade mozzarella cheese. Once again, really easy to do. Simple ingredients. If I can do it, you can do it. I'm Matt Taylor. This has been another episode of In the Kitchen with Matt. Thank you for joining me. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or requests, put them down below and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Thumbs up, down the corner, push it. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and check out my other videos. Take care. Time for me to dive into this some more. Oh yeah, mm -mm -mm. Yeah. Mm, mm mm mm.